Welcome back for another video. We're in an international break, which is often a popular wildcard window, as you've got a couple of weeks to tinker with your team, and you can react to if there's any injuries or price changes over the break as well. So I've put together a wildcard team, and an opportunity to talk about what might be the best team right now. The question is, when should you actually wildcard? I wouldn't do it purely because you've started slowly, if you're happy with your team. The wildcard is the most powerful chip, and it should be used if you've got some picks that have gone wrong, some injuries perhaps, and perhaps some unfavourable fixtures. Game week 6 is the next wildcard window that I like after this week, and that's when I might use mine. So let's get into the team. Now perhaps controversially in goal it's Henderson, but hear me out on this one. He has been a disappointment, but if you actually step back and compare all the 4.5 mil keepers, Sales has fared best with 11 points for Forest, but that's literally only 4 more points than Henderson. Palace come back from the break with a home fixture against Leicester and then it's home to Man United again and then away to Everton. The 4.5 mil keepers have always been unpredictable for me and in honesty any of them could come out on top. I like Flecken as well. Brentford come back from the break with two horrendous fixtures, they're against Man City and Spurs but the keepers are always long term picks and after that they're home to West Ham and Wolves. Somehow, if those were the first two fixtures after the break and then two difficult ones I feel like it'd be a more popular wildcard pick even though it's the same fixtures in a different order, if you get what I mean. When I make a transfer, I'm looking at the next 4 or 5 game weeks, but goalkeepers are potentially for the next 10 to 15, or maybe even longer until your second wildcard. Moving on to the defence, which is Robertson, Concer and Dunk. I can't help but wonder if Robertson and a 1 mil saving is better than going for Trent for 7 mil. Both are super attacking, they're taking some corners and some set pieces. Now Trent's underlying numbers have been better in the opening 3, but Robertson has come close to hauling himself. Robertson's created 5 chances to Trent's 7, 18 crosses to Trent's 12, 2 shots to Trent's 3. It's all about the combinations though and where that 1 mil goes essentially. Robertson and Eze is better than going Trent and a 5.9 mil midfielder in my eyes, or Robertson and Gabriel over Trent and a 5 mil defender. They can definitely make the case for going with a double up on the wildcard, given that they do have Forest, Bournemouth, Wolves and Palace as their next 4. I'm curious what Slot's plan is when the Champions League starts though. Does he use Bradley in the Champions League? Or could Bradley get a sniff and right back in the league if Trent's playing in Europe as well? A Brighton defender is a no-brainer given they've got two home games to Ipswich and Forest next. Now if we knew that Caddy Ogley was a guaranteed starter it'd be so obvious. Whenever he breaks in he's got potential to be an absolute beast. It could even be after the break if you want to take the chance. The 24 year old can play almost anywhere. He'll be most likely in left wing back or right wing back in Brighton's system but he can be used in midfield. He's got 30 goals, 39 assists in his career and he was impressive at the Euros. That all considered I've gone for Dunk here as he's the nailed route into Brighton's defence with a bit of threat on set pieces still. And lastly, Consa, the other 4.5 mil defender, and he also comes back from the break of two home fixtures against Everton and Wolves, and then he's got Ipswich away. Dunk's fixtures get a bit tricky in a few weeks' time, which is where the bench comes in later. Liverpool are joint top on the clean shields after the break, giving a 47% chance along with City, Brighton a third of 44.5%, and Aston Villa fourth of 42%. It's going to be a similar story in Gamic 5 as well. I decided to leave Rico Lewis out. He's been so good for City, but I just don't trust him to start every game. In fact, the other day, Pep said, quote, But everything three days, he cannot sustain that. We need Carl Walker back. We need Stones back. And all the players ready because of the schedule that comes now until the end of the season. Pre-season is officially over. The real season starts after the international break. Obviously, Pep could just use Lewis in every league game and Walker in the Champions League. But it's completely obvious Lewis won't play every match. On to the midfield, which is Semenyo, Salah, Eze, Minte and Palmer. Now there's just no way I'm going without Salah with those fixtures on a wildcard. Amazingly, despite all the Haaland vs Salah debates, they're both on exactly the same points with 41 each. Haaland's the high round of the two, so if you do have both, then Salah's the upside captain in Game Week 4, as I do expect Haaland to be the most captain player once again. And it just goes to show, by the way, how it is a bit easier for midfielders. Haaland's on back-to-back -back hat tricks, and yet Salah's tired of him with 3 goals, 3 assists. Haaland's on 7 returns and all 7 are goals. The extra point per goal and the clean sheet points add up for midfielders. Everyone's talking about how good Haaland's been, but the other side of the coin is Haaland's having to score consecutive hat-tricks to keep pace with Salah. Semenyo's a bit of a rogue pick, but I've been really impressed by him. Last season he started in 25 of 38 games, and he was often an impact sub and often brought off early when he did start. This season he's played 90 minutes every game, he started all 3, with 3 returns in 3 games. He seems to be very overlooked, and don't get me wrong, Liverpool and Arsenal in his next 5 isn't ideal, but he's a cheap low risk pick. And check this out as well, after 3 game weeks, he's 4th among all players for expected goal involvement. Haaland, Salah and De Bruyne are the only 3 players ahead of him, and plus Semenyo's got Southampton and Leicester in his next 4, so why not? 
The other budget mid I've included is Minte, who's been an absolute menace. He's carried his pre-season form into the season. He's got two assists so far, but I can see him doing very well in the next couple of fixtures. Matoma's the other one that I really like if you can find that one mil for the upgrade. He's an even better pick than Minte. On a side note, there's no Arsenal on the start in 11. I do have one on the bench though. Their run of fixtures from game each six is unmissable, so make sure you've got a plan for it. So if I was lining up with this team, the plan would be to roll and then look to bring in Saka for either Salah or Palmer in game week six and optionally buying Bumo for one of the five and a half men midfielders, probably Minte. So realistically, I think the play would be Salah to Saka and then Minte to Mbumo in game week six. So Palmer's the other premium midfielders with a decent block of green fixtures. He's got Bournemouth, West Ham, Brighton and Forest. There's a lot you can do with only going two premiums. No Palmer does allow you to have the Trent and Robertson double up, and you can own Mbumo in advance and just bench him this week, etc. I did think about it, but my preferred route is going Salah, Palmer and Haaland, and then make that Salah to Saka switch in game week six, which frees up loads of money. If you're on a wildcard, which premiums would you have? And last midfielder is Eze, who thankfully repaid the patience of those that held him last game week, otherwise he would have been a more difficult one to justify. On that note, actually, I still think Fernandes is a very good wildcard pick, who's likely going to be 8.3 more by the next deadline, so you could sell him if you've got him and then buy him back in if you're on a wildcard. He's against Southampton as well. Eze is one return against Leicester away from returning back to his starting price, I reckon. Over the opening three game weeks, Semenya has actually taken the most shots of any player with 17, and then Eze second with 15, and then Haaland with 14. By the way, how absurd is 7 goals from 14 shots from Haaland? Absolutely not sustainable, but let's move on to the front two, as it is Haaland and João Pedro. Haaland gets the armband for the Brentford fixture, so it's a premium draft, and despite Arsenal and Newcastle in his next three, I would have him on the wildcard. You can definitely make the case for Guillermo Val, I have seen lots of wildcard drafts with no Haaland. But I just think given lots of great budget picks available, like Semenya, Minte and João Pedro, and the 4.5 mil defenders actually, then it is feasible to have Haaland, Salah and Palmer. And as I say, I'd switch Salah to Saka in game week 6, which frees up about 2.5 mil. The beauty of Haaland and Salah is you can captain Salah against Bournemouth in game week 5, and then in game week 6 you've got a choice between Salah, Palmer, or even Saka if you bring him in. Or you could even captain Haaland against Newcastle away still. I prefer João Pedro to Welbeck, as his minutes have been superior, and when Welbeck's come off early, he's been pushed into the number 9 role. So I see absolutely no reason to go without him for 5.7 mil. And he hasn't been called up for the international duty for Brazil either. So he'll be well rested ahead of that Ipswich fixture. This is a good shout as well for 6.1 mil. But he does have those two difficult games to Man City and Spurs before West Ham and Wolves. I think Visser and Mbuma are both great picks now. With no Tony in the picture, those are the two players that their goals are going to come from. One strategy I've seen on the wildcard, which I do like, is going Mbuma and João Pedro in combination, as their fixtures rotate perfectly. Though as we saw, João Pedro can score against an Arsenal, though of course they were against 10 men. The alternative to João Pedro and Mbuma is going Minte or Matoma and then Vissa, and then you bench Vissa and rotate them. I much prefer going Mbuma and João Pedro though. On the bench it's Turner, Gabriel, Mosquera and Ouijo. So I've got about 0.2 mil on the bank here. You might have more, you might have less, depending on how you've managed with the price changes so far. So the plan is to bench Gabriel for the next two game weeks, and then he's a set and forget starter from game week six. Now there's so many four mil defenders. There's Greaves, Stevens, Mascara, Howard Bellis, uh, Bednarak, Keane. I've gone for Mascara here, who has played every minute so far. And the other reason being, in game week seven, when Constance has got Man United and Dunk's got Spurs, there is the option to play Mascara, who's got Brentford, alongside Robertson and Gabriel on the starting 11. You could alternatively go for Fass or Vestergaard, who are home to Bournemouth that week instead. So that's the wildcard, let me know what you think. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you're subscribing and like the video. Thanks for watching and see you soon for the next one.